And welcome to another Mark Bishop show. Well, the New York Sun. It was one of America's historic newspapers. It was relaunched recently as an online daily with national and international coverage and an aim to help restore public trust in the press. So, folks, let me give you a little bit of a background, if you will. The New York Sun was founded in 1833 and quickly was heralded as one of the most influential American newspapers. It sold for a penny making news available for the first time to working men and women in New York. Now, after the Civil War, The Sun grew to become America's largest newspaper and over the years achieved many accolades, including two Pulitzer Prizes. My very special guest on this show is Dovid Effuen, publisher and chairman of the historic New York Sun newspaper. Welcome, Dovid. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be with you, uh, and especially uh, to hear that Fresh, crisp British accent. <laughs> I don't know how often it is. Well, uh, you have two Brits. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I get taken for that, but actually I'm an Aussie, would you believe? <laughs> anyway, it Oh okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. As long as you didn't call me a Kiwi, that's the main thing. Uh it ceased publication in nineteen fifty, but it was then revived in print in two thousand and two, David, and competed with the New York Times. Now you're sharing, David, that the relaunched New York's Sun's mission is to uphold the finest journalistic traditions and speak out the sentiment of the American people. You know, what say you to that? Well, that, that's exactly right, and I'm very glad that you've touched on a little bit of the history. Uh, it's no secret that despite the fact that there are newspapers everywhere, especially digital newspapers everywhere, the industry really is in crisis, and it's uh, what I would describe as a crisis of trust. You have massive segments of the American public that just no longer trust this vital institution of American democracy, if you will, the the lifeline of American democracy, the backstop of, of American democracy. You know, if journalism is referred to as the lifeblood of democracy, then, you know, if journalism is sick, then our democracy is sick. So, you know, a newspaper like the New York Sun that brings with it 200 years of, of history that declares on its iconic masthead that it shines for all, mm-hmm. that has a long tradition of putting the interests of the American public first and advocating for the American public is really a newspaper that is needed, much needed for a moment like this. You know, I would even say that it is the newspaper for this very moment in time. Well, the motto, uh, as you said, it shines for all. I mean, that says a lot. Why was now the right time to relaunch a new paper like the New York Sun? As you're saying, there's so much out there, but, but why now? Well, I think it's really this point um, that I've just made is that trust is really at historic lows. I don't know if you've seen some of those numbers, but, you know, a recent study of 90,000 people in 45 different countries Mm -hmm. ranked the United States as lost in media trust. I don't know where Britain was or Australia was, but the United States was actually at the bottom of the list. 54% of Americans, according to a recent Edelman poll, believe that journalists are deliberately trying to mislead them. So, you know, while there is, you know, a plurality of different voices out there, it certainly feels to a lot of Americans like there is a monotony of thought that newspapers have really begun to abdicate some of the basic journalistic principles, you know, the first among them being their role and responsibility to put their public first, to hold the power to account on behalf of the people. There are many newspapers today that seem to think that their role is to police the people on behalf of of the power, to hold the people to account on behalf of the powers that they favor. So in a climate like this, um, that, you know, it really seems to us as as quite obvious that a newspaper that has a long history of bucking that trend, serving the American public, recognizing the core journalistic principles and upholding them, putting principle over politics, party and personality. That really is a newspaper that that is that is uh, desperately needed, that there's a crying need for at a time like this. Uh, well, I think one of the biggest challenges, you know, that you're going to have, and obviously it won't take too long for you to get this point across, 
with depending on what you're writing about and what your topics are. But you're right about gaining the trust. I mean, what type of reader does the New York Sun appeal to? Do you think? Well, certainly, it's a it's certainly a thoughtful publication. It's not sort of a clickbait publication. We aim in every article to exceed expectations and not to d- disappoint. Um, it's a newspaper, really, that that targets and is is built for those folks that just haven't found a home in the in the many newspapers of record across this country. You know, if you look around at the media landscape and you say, look, I haven't found a paper that speaks for me, that I trust, that has my interests at heart, that sort of touches on the issues that are most fundamental to the future of my family, my community, what it, with the, the vision that I have for this country, um, then the New York Sun is really a newspaper for you and our our arms are wide open. You know, it's very easy to look around and then age. Our sense is that the American way is really to participate in building a better alternative. And the New York Sun is back and inviting everybody to to consider joining us and being a part of building that better journalism for the future of our country. Well, let's face it, uh, David, news sources have been under scrutiny in recent years for accuracy in reporting. I mean, how can you assure readers brand newbies that you want to get on board, that your news is real news. I mean, have you sat down at the board table with, uh, you know, the brightest of the brightest and uh, marketing agencies and so on, and have you come up with anything that you think you've got to go out there with to prove what you're trying to do? Well, look, we understand that uh, Rome was not built in a day. We understand also that trust is not something that's granted. Trust is something that's built over a period of time. Mm. So, you know, we're certainly standing on the shoulders of giants. We come with an incredible history and tradition that uh, certainly our senses should be encouraging and inviting to, for the American public to visit us and to and, and, and to give it a look. Um, but ultimately, you know, that real reciprocity relationship um, is something that, you know, will come with engaging with the New York Sun, will, will come with some time. But, you know, we have gathered a group of the very, very best and brightest with a long um, track record of real, real credibility, valuable opinion leadership. Uh, we've interviewed probably around 300 people mm. um, in the launch of the sun and selected the very best and brightest. You know, we know that the news, the strength of a newspaper is not measured by market cap or cash on hand, but in the hearts and minds of its editors and journalists. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've assembled a formidable group uh, who are who have front of mind the interests, priorities, and concerns of the American pu- people and the American public. You know, every day that they come to to the editorial meetings and to the uh, to the newsroom. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I think a lot of people will be a fresh start. And from what I can ascertain, there's going to be what a daily, an evening, or Monday to Friday and weekends as well. Just cover that for us. Yes, so come and check it out. The website is nysun.com, www.nysun.com. You'll be greeted with our new, newly designed and built for user engagement web platform. You'll see, obviously, the headlines there leading the story of the day. Um, and you'll be asked to enter your email and sign up. If you put your email in there, and I encourage everyone to do so, you'll receive twice daily news alerts, the morning sun in the morning, the evening sun in the evening, on your way to work and your way home from work. Um, and then at some stage, you'll be encouraged to, to get a subscription. And of course, um, if you've enjoyed your experience reading the sun, encourage everybody to do so. The subscriptions start at just 12 bucks a month, which uh, today's inflation, um, our sense is there's something for everybody there and there are a few other options that go from there. It's at nysun.com. Our arms are open. Uh, welcome everybody to join. <laughs> Front doors open and the Latin is on on the uh, balcony. Very nice. Are you going to have a crossword as a matter of fact? <laughs> we do have a crossword and as a matter of fact, um, our crossword editor, Peter Gordon, is among the most uh, decorated and widely respected crossword writers in the country. So, uh, all right. If you like crosswords? There'll be a few challenges in there, then, that's for sure. That's for sure. The New York Sun. Looking forward to it. Okay, so my last question to you, because we've got to go, but your long-term strategy, all going well, what would uh, David Afyun aspire to? Well, you know, there's the impact that we'd like to have, and certainly if we can make a dent uh, in restoring trust 
uh, public trust in the media, that would be a phenomenal achievement. But I think also we like to look back to, to our history and, you know, our traditional rival, the New York Times, um, you know, has certainly um, reached a position of prominence in American public life. It fa- fancies itself as the paper of record and publishing all the news that's fit to print. But there are so many Americans who, you know, reject that characterization, whose experience is very different. The New York Sun was founded 18 years before the Times, mm. uh, back in 1830. Either with the Times for many years, it's got almost, you know, more history, a couple of hundred years of history, Pulitzer Prizes. It's got the New York broadsheet with the Gothic masthead and the focus on politics and the arts. So in many ways, it is the mirror image of the Times. Obviously, the Times is the Goliath and we're the David in this relationship. Mm -hmm. But if we can successfully um, create that counterweight and build an alternative that that, uh, speaks to many Americans, as many Americans, if not more Americans, um, you know, will certainly be um, an achievement that we'd be very proud of. Ah, oh, fantastic. Well, all the very, very best to you, uh, David, and good luck with this project. And the uh, very last thing, the site address again for my listeners, please. That's www.nysun.com, N-Y-S-U-N.com. Fantastic. All the very best and have a wonderful week. Yeah, thank you, sir. What a pleasure. Bye.